Do I got audio? Looks like it. Okay. Oh, hold on. A little bit of chapstick. So, um, last night I went through and made some changes to our. Um, so, well, let me get everybody cut up. Right at the top. We streamed on Pixel Logic's live stream on Tuesday. So first Tuesday of the month, I stream on Pixel Logic's channel. Uh, it's not on my page yet, so I'll go to regular old live here. So right here, if you want to watch uh, this, the making of this baseball, and of course on my YouTube channel, if you go to playlist, look for the Big Blue Genie. Here's the full playlist of all the live streams. So here it is, the Extreme Baseball Head. So you know what, I'll go ahead and link that here. Um, stop, share, copy, paste. So there's that. Um, eventually I'll probably post this on ArtStation when it's all wrapped up and done and both videos are, both live streams done. So we have more stuff to talk about, just little things I did last night. Uh, but before I do that, I was, <laughs> I logged on the Discord for the first time in like, um, I don't know, a couple months. And uh, there was a question on there, and I also have a CG Master Academy question that I'll just answer here because I don't want to leave it hanging for too long. So I'm just going to answer a couple quick questions first. Um, hey, John Yu. I'm going to answer two quick questions, and then we're going to hop into this guy, show what's updated, and then we're going to go into Substance Painter and finish him out, I think. So the first question I have is, I guess I'll start with the easier question. So the CG Master Academy question that I had, and again, I should just do a video just for that and then post it, but I'm going to talk about it here. Um, uh, is there a way to play slight random rotation or scale to multiple objects? If I had a rectangle and use control to drag to duplicate them, is there a quick way I can easily apply a randomness to those shapes? Um, not with control drag. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out of this. And we're going to grab, we're going to make a couple planks for like a wall. So, uh, if, you know, I'm going to start with the polymesh 3D, go in here to edit mode, go down here to initialize, and we'll do a Q cube. Just a nice simple wall, and because we'll keep it, yeah, we'll go over here to skin shader for so you see a little bit better. So W, I'm gonna scale this out, scale this down, and now we have a wooden plank. So one way to create multiple wooden planks, you can hold down Control and drag out, and you can go. There you go. You got wooden planks. Uh, another thing that is in here, not as, I don't know, usefulness. I'll leave up to you. But underneath brush, I think there is. Somewhere in here, there's like an alpha you can drag that'll give you like do -do 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 -do, little wooden planks that you can like stamp into the ground. I'm not exactly where sure where that is, but anyway. Um, so we have wooden planks here, and instead of going in here and saying, oh, okay, let's do an auto groups and then W and then control tap this one and like give a little slight, you know, warble or adjustment or anything like that, um, and then do that for multiple planks. Uh, one thing you can do is I'm gonna go back down to our original plank here. And in fact, if I wanted to like, if I wanted to subdivide this and start sculpting on this, this is pretty bad geometry for that. However, I can go in here to geometry zero mesher and I can say, uh, I'm just gonna do like half detect edges and that'll go ahead and give me nice even quads-ish. Um, not much you can do about this, but if you did wanna even these out even more, you could go insert um, single edge loop or insert multiple edge loop, keep poly group, and you can just put a line right down here. Uh, the cool thing about keep edges is that it goes ahead and gives you a poly group on all sides and creases for you. Um, so in this case, we could say, you know, crease level of two, smooth set of three, and this could be just a plank block out shape, right? Now, instead of going over here and holding down control and then dragging out multiple planks, um, I'm going to give this thing a path so that I can add random rotation to it as an instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this into an insert mesh. So B, create insert mesh new. Ah, do a quick save when you do that. For some reason, every once in a while with ZBrush, you'll be working on something and then you'll create an insert mesh brush and then you'll say, still create it, and it'll break. The good news is whenever it does that, it's almost 100% loaded up here and you're recovered. You could do the recovered Z tool, but you're gonna lose anything else you were working on when you switched over. There should be a recovered Z project. Just double click that one and you'll be good to go. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Rich. Um, where did they get? Oh, thank you, uh, Red Light. Glad the videos are helping out. Good morning. 
Good morning, everybody. Excellent. So anyway, we have we have our plank here. We have our file set back up. B, create insert mesh new. Now we have an insert mesh brush that we can make a bunch of planks with. Um, however, if we want a path for those planks, what I can actually do, this will be fun. Um, I'm going to take this plank. I'm going to hold down control shift and we're going to control shift tap that and we're going to say delete hidden. We're going to go in here to geometry dynamic and we're going to turn dynamic off. So if I hit W and go in here and you know, I'm going to take this middle one out. Insert single logic, hold down alt. You don't have to do this to create a path for planks. I'm just, because it's here, it's, why not? I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say bu -bu 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 bend curve. So it's going to put uh, a curve in here. You'll see two dots at the end. Uh, if you need to change the, uh, where is it, axis, if it's like this or this, uh, just change that red cone until it's left to right and then change your resolution in here with however many dots you need to kind of go through, I don't need that many, to kind of go through here and kind of set a path for your planks. And then if you need to go even crazier, it's like, oh, it's gonna scoot down here and then it's gonna kind of maybe be a, I don't know, whatever. There's your bridge, right? So now every single one of these faces can be replaced by that plank board that we have. If you need more faces, what I can do is I can go in here, I'm gonna say geometry crease. So it creases my open edges. So when I go in here and say uh, divide, it'll, keep my, it'll maintain my width. These corners get a little chewed up, that's okay. I can just delete those. I'm gonna say delete lower. I'm gonna get, get rid of this insert single edge loop down the middle. Um, you know, and I'll just go through here and I'll just say, you know what, delete a single poly here. And yeah, good enough, so there's my path and I wanna put planks along this path. So B, we have an insert mesh here. I'm gonna go in here to say control W, so you can see that's a poly group. Um, brush, create. And we're going to switch this insert mesh brush with a nano mesh brush. So create nano mesh brush. M, uh, well, with that one selected, it only has one inserted object, and that's the plank that we made. So now if I hover over a face, it's going to default to insert nano mesh single poly. We'll just do poly group ball. And I'm going to drag that plank out onto this uh, mesh here. Now I'm hoping that if I go into the nano mesh properties, the first thing we want to do, there's actually two ways to do this. One is Modify topology, geometry, modify topology, and there is an align edge. So you can just click align edge and that'll make them all consistent. You can also go into nano mesh alignment and choose like align to normal or short edge or long edge, whatever works, but usually it's aligned to normal. Um, so this is fine. Uh, we're gonna go in here to our, first our rotate. So now we have every single one of these faces is being controlled by every single one of these instances of this board is being controlled uh, by the placement of this nano mesh. So all these faces have a have an instance of a board link to it. Uh, so what we can do is we can go over here to our rotation, our Z rotation, and we can just rotate these planks so that they fit along here. Um, we can also go in here to size. We set this to one. It'll basically kind of fit the thing. If we go in here to fill with a size of one, it'll actually fit that plank exactly to the corners of that object. Of course, if it's not a square object or a rectangular object, it's not gonna fit perfectly. It'll fit the bounding box of that object basically to the face. In this case, it fits perfectly. So that's another way you can actually use kind of a micro poly effect with your nanomesh. So we're not gonna do fill. We'll go ahead and do, um, I guess, proportional. And in here, you can change the width, the length, and the uh, height. You can just change that as you go. And then over here, you this is where you can give variation for all of those if you want a little variation between your boards. Um, and also you can go down here to random distribution and that'll just start randomly distributing planks along here. Um, in this case, I don't know if I'll need that, but you can also go in here to H tile. So two planks each side and then V tile, two planks for each face. That gets them a little closer together. And then I can over crank their size a bit, uh, maybe change their width so it matches the general profile of what I was going for. And then this is where you can go in here to there's Y offset, which I don't really need, X offset, which I don't really need, but the Z offset is the height offset, so I can go in here to variance, and that'll kind of offset, kind of give them a little doo -doo 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 -doo, kind of stair-steppy kind of look, just kind of randomize. And then also the Z rotation here, uh, we can dial in a little Z rotate, just a tiny bit of Z rotation variance, and maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe a tiny bit of Y rotation, you might have to put in a little slight value in here so that you can get a little Y rotation variance, but in this case, I don't think we'll really need that. Anyway, here's some planks. We've put some rotation variance into it. If you don't wanna see the plane that it's on, go up here and turn off show placement. So now you've got all your planks in here. 
if you decided you want to change, and here's the other thing too, is if you go, you know, turn show placement back on, if you wanted to vary how many, what planks are on here, you can go down and hold on Alt, and you can well, switch as a Q mesh. So hold hover over face, Z model brush, BZM, hover over face, space bar, Q mesh, and I'm just going to hold down Alt, and I can paint some of these out. So as I paint these out, oops, I accidentally deleted an edge there. Um, as I go through and I paint these, like, randomize um, polygroups, since we said, you know, put this on polygroup all, you can put a different type of plank on here with different settings um, and make just kind of randomize a bunch of different types of planks with insert mesh brushes onto this plank path. Just another option for you. Um, also, if you want to change after the fact, you're like, ah, plank's pretty good, but I wish I had made some different decisions, no problem. Um, you can go, so there's show instance, you can turn those off, and then show placement, you can turn those off. Um, we can go in here to edit mesh, and then now you have access to your geometry. So if you wanted to go through and say, you know what, let's go down here to geometry. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> geometry uh, crease, it's already open. Uh, if you just do bevel width with creases, it'll go through and give you bevels on all your creases. If you hold down control, it'll put bevels um, wherever you have polygroups. So in this case, we can just go ahead and just, I don't know, run a crease on all these, I suppose. Um, it says dynamic turned on. These won't have dynamic turned on, but I went ahead and just put a bevel on there and uh, we can just deal with that later. Um, so here, and then crease, I'm just going to run a crease, small crease tolerance to crease those corners. Um, any other changes you want to make, if you want to go in here and kind of fiddle with, you know, verts and stuff. And as I'm moving these things, it's actually updating these on the fly. Um, so we're just making slight little planky adjustments on here, um, you know, like this. So we've, we've added, you know, plank variations on here. So we're done with this. We can go down here to... Uh, do, 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 go out of edit mesh here and then here we have our planks and then I wonder if there's there is a instead of a rotation a flip horizontal flip vertical I wish there was like a randomize with mirror so that I could mirror across an axis and then have you know the, the solution to that would be to do a multiple insert mesh brush on one side and then on the other, and then use your poly groups to dictate where those go, so it kind of randomizes that. Um, but anyway, there's, and if, once you're done with this, and this is close, but no cigar, uh, you can, and these are all still based, if you show placement here, they're all just kind of stuck to that plane, right? So even if you have this off, as you're moving this, it's moving the plane, and then these things are kind of moving along with it. Um, if you want individual control over these planks, you can go in here to, uh, we'll do inventory one to mesh, That'll convert all these to actual geometries. So when hold down control shift, grab that. Control shift drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then now you have individual access for your plank. So uh easy, easy way to kind of move these individually is just go into your move brush, make your draw size one, go down here to auto masking, turn on topological, and then now you can go through here and you can just kind of use this to move an entire object. So very quickly, you can kind of go through here and just like we were doing, add a little randomization to your what in the nano mesh properties was the offset, whatever axis offset that was, and you can go through here and you can kind of tweak these things out. Or if you want to go through and delete some of these, you can just grab a little piece of one, go through here, control shift drag, control shift uh, drag to invert that, and then control shift alt drag over like just little pieces of the ones you want to delete, like so. And then control shift drag to invert your selection, control shift A, control shift drag again, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then again, move brush, draw size of one, and then you can kind of scoot, you know, these over or whatever. So there is your randomized planks stuff. Um, cool. Mm. Coffee, that sounds good. Um, uh, when I get to Painter, I have a question about new features that you might have an answer to. Ooh, new features? I probably don't have an answer to. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, that was the first question that I had. Uh, that was a CG Master Academy question. So I'll go ahead and uh, now I can just send a link to this timestamp. Okay, so uh, here's here's what we're actually going to be working on today, and we're going to throw this guy into Substance Painter. Um, I'll go through a couple different little techniques of stuff that I did uh, post the previous video that we did on Tuesday. 
which again you can find on my YouTube channel. Blah blah blah. Um, can I add details to a model and then bake to a low poly and painter without changing its topology? Can I add in ZBrush? Can I add details to a model and bake to a low poly and painter? Yes. Yeah, if you have a low res mesh and then you bring that into ZBrush and you subdivide it and then you put little details on it and then you export that as a high um, and then export the low as a low res, you should be able to bake your details just fine. As, yeah, that should work. Uh, depending on, I don't know. There's a couple caveats to that, but generally speaking, that should work. Um, <laughs> Venom, you can uh, actually, it might not work on a live stream, but once this is posted, go into the gear icon and change your playback speed to like 0.75. It'll make me sound cooler anyways. <clears throat> also, speaking of that, if you're new to ZBrush and NanoMesh and stuff, uh, and you're like, NanoMesh, what the hell is that? Go into my YouTube channel and... Uh, I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, you have to make the window a little wider now. Uh, go into the search and then just do nano mesh. And then it'll show you all sorts of cool nano mesh stuff in there. Also, if you're brand new to ZBrush, uh, go into this intro to ZBrush series. And then this is like 50 videos on just basic ZBrush functionality, get you up and running. Uh, same thing on my ArtStation page. If you scroll down, here's the intro to ZBrush and then all these little bent down corners. Uh, are the what's new series all the way back to ZBrush 4R8 right here. So R4R8 to 2022, uh, all information on getting ZBrush up and running. So I'll link you to that here. How does this make it easier? Um, okay, so the other one's a little bit more difficult. It's basically, you know, how would you make, again, this is on Discord and I from three months ago, <laughs> which is about how often I log into Discord. How would you go about making this type of shape? And this one's a little trickier. Um, so whenever I'm posed with something a bit tricky, what I'll try to do is break it down into its simple component shapes. Um, in this case, it's actually like, this thing is like woven. So my knee jerk reaction, if I wanted to do this exactly, was it would be to take Z-spheres and literally weave Z-spheres in this pattern and then uh, go convert that to geometry. And then if you needed to have it like as a relief, then you would go through and use like bar relief or something to project it to a plane. Um, however, if I say uh, copy, if I want to kind of simplify this, I'm going to drop this opacity down and just kind of work through the problem. So I'm going to say, okay, brush here, um, make this a little smaller. So essentially what we have is just repeating shapes like this one kind of repeats in, in like a noodle shape. And again, it doesn't, it might appear weaved. You don't have to make everything uh, as it appears. You can if you want to, but if we're just talking about making an IMM brush, it would basically be like, okay, here's one little piece that I need to make. Um, here's another little piece that I need to make here. Here's a little noodle piece, and then it just repeats after this, right? So here's uh, another piece. And again, you can continue this piece here, but then it starts linking up. If you can figure out how to do that, great. Um, if you can't, you can cheat it, I promise. Um, especially if it's just gonna be baked to a plane, right? Um, which is gonna be not linked anyways. So again, just trying to get at the component parts of what I need is just kind of going through and figuring out what needs to overlap, what kind of noodles I need to make uh, in this shape, and then figure out how many of them I need to make to get it to repeat. So this one starts repeating, so about right halfway through here, these I need to create. And then these ones I can just create manually if I need to. The little end caps. Now, if you're awesome and you want to sit here and figure that out, you could literally make an IMM brush where this is the start of the IMM, this little base down here is the end of the IMM, and then insert mesh brush. And then you didn't, you wouldn't want to do this entire chunk as an IMM brush. What you'd want to do is just find exactly this repeating pattern, and then take this, and this will be your repeating middle. So uh, top bottom and then repeating middle uh, and then this you would move down here and so essentially you would have a brush that looked like this but this is the top this is the bottom and then a repeating middle and then as you drag out your IMM brush it'll just repeat this and it'll all be linked up and welded and stuff like that I don't have the patience for that if I needed to do this for a job then I would have the patience for that um, but that's the basic idea go in here and figure out what noodles you need to make so and how they need to overlap and then just go through and recreate that.
if you just need something that's generally or vaguely repeating, um, you can just go find a weave. Uh, where would that be? Yeah, underneath my brushes. I've got some random, I believe, IMM brushes. I hope I usually copy them between installs. Um, this one is from the ZBrush repository page. It's pretty old now, but back when the IMM brushes were new, there was a lot of uh, ZBrush repository. Uh, actually, it looks like I don't have it. Uh, I guess we can go find it. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry, insert multi mesh repository thread uh, in here. And then there's a bunch of different things. And then in one of these is like a weave that's kind of already set up. So if I just scroll down and I should be able to find it, hopefully the links still work. Uh, yeah, these are, there's some really cool ones. Like if you want to figure out that pattern and have a repeat, it would be just like this and you can take these and modify them as needed. Um, I'm looking for one in particular that is, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it so I could Google it and find it a little bit faster. Uh, uh huh. Uh huh. More, more, more weaves. And again, I, more than anything, I just don't have the patience to figure out like how to make this design line up. It's not difficult, it's just tedious, uh, which is usually where I have to draw the line for live streams is if I'm just gonna be doing tedious stuff, I just skip it and then move on to something a little more interesting. Uh, damn. Um, weave, I guess I can just take one of these ones. You get the basic idea. There was a, it was a very specific weave. Of course, finding anything in here is impossible. So we'll go back to something tangentially related, just so I can show you if you wanted to do it right, a good example of it. Oh my God, here we go. Uh-huh, three brushes, we'll steal this one. So show in folder here, and I'm going to unzip that on my folder, seven zip extract to three brushes. And then if I just want to open these up, I can just open the folder and then double click it. So now we have, we'll go in here and we'll make a poly mesh edit. And we'll go through here and I can drag this out. You can say, oh, okay, here's the repeating uh, shape, right? If I wanna see how this is created, I can just hit W, um, let's hit Q. Oh, it's just got one, so it's not a multi. So in this case, I'm gonna use um, since I can't hit W and then select it uh, easily, I'm going to go in here to my Z plugins. I have a IMM extractor. I'm just going to hit this button. So it'll just grab it for me. So here's my top poly group here. So here's my top poly group. Here's my middle repeating. And then here's my bottom. And then that'll just go ahead and sew those up as we work. Um, so this is if you want to make the noodles and have a repeat, this is how you would make it. And then B to create an insert mesh brush new. There's your insert mesh brush, and then you would need to go into stroke, curve, mode, and then brush, uh, modifiers, make sure tri parts is on, weld points is on. If you need to turn stretch or curve res on, go ahead and do that. And then of course under stroke, I don't know why this is the default, but stroke, bend start, bend end, turn snap off if you need to, uh, if that makes sense for what you're making. And then there you go, there's your repeating brush. Uh, in this case, what I would do is I'd say, well, let me just inflate that, um, you know, after I drag the brush out and then we say, okay, this is what I like, tap off, go ahead and say uh, split mass points and then go through here and run and inflate. If something doesn't weld for some reason, you can go through in Geometry Modified Topology weld points and that should grab most of the really closely, uh, really close verts. But, you know, there's, there's your basic woven shape, which will give you that, generally speaking. Um, if you needed to go in a straight line, uh, this one you could just drag out, I suppose. But uh, if you needed to go in a straight line, you just go in here and say, give me a plane, make poly mesh 3D. And then uh, I guess you can just hold down. Actually, let's do this. Let's hold down control shift. We'll hit control W and then you can just frame this. So you can go in here and say stroke frame your poly group border and then just tap on here with your brush and make it whatever size you want. And then you can say split mass points and then again, run your inflate. Now if you needed to capture this, if you hit control D and we make it a little bit nicer looking, you need to capture this to an object uh, like a plane or a coin or something. And this is another thing that you can just search for 
uh, if it looks it seems a little bit weird, but let's say we want to transfer this to a, a, a relief. I'm going to hit Control D, and we're just going to subdivide this up so that we have enough information to capture. And then we have our capturable object here. So we're going to select this plane. We're going to go down here to Subtool Project. Uh, I'm sorry, Subtool uh, Project Bar Relief, and then you can just project whatever you have in front of this to uh, a relief here, and then you can go back here and you can adjust last if you need to, and kind of set that up as a sculpted area of your plane. Um, okay, we'll get caught back up and then we'll hop into the um, <laughs> frog planks. We'll hop back into uh, the baseball thing. Um, yes, Algerian from UK. Glad you could join us this morning. Uh, okay, getting caught up. If I miss something, I don't do that on purpose. I, I apologize. Just keep shutting it out. Um, New map makers, height, bent, normal, and other. Okay, uh, yeah, I can maybe look into some of those. Split screen earlier was great. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, and that, that split screen, it kind of hints at like, oh my god, could I have like multiple viewports set up? But um, unfortunately, no. But if you need that a split screen manually, you can go in here to um, transform there it is transform split screen and then you can just work with that that's kind of sometimes cool for some source of some reference that you might use um yes so oh yeah so as far as workflows go um what was i talking about it was oh imm brushes man my brain's already going that's not a good sign we're 30 minutes in um it would be in here and oh yeah bar relief so R E L I E F. <laughs> there we go. So here's all of the all of that stuff. It really, it's just a pretty short video. There's not a ton to it. It's very useful, but um, cool. Yes, you can use curve if you want to. Um, since I do the interesting things, I'm gonna work in the future of ZBrush UI overhaul. Just a hint would be nice. I I'm not. Uh, sometimes. I'm involved with ZBrush stuff in in a in a beta sense. Sometimes I'll work on a beta. Um, I haven't done I haven't done any ZBrush stuff in a long time, so I have honestly I being perfectly honest, I have no idea what's going on with ZBrush. I just use it every once in a while. <laughs> um, how to get rid of how to get rid of the right click menu? So if you if you like right click navigation, for instance, if you go through here and you can use uh, right click navigation. Um, and then you have a right click menu, which actually isn't, isn't popping up in mind because underneath preferences, I want to say under interface, right click navigation, you can disallow that. So you can turn that off and then go in here to quig, quig config, store config, and then I'll just keep that right click menu off. Um, yeah, it is right now at 628 AM, Austin, Texas. Cool. I've been good glitch. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, yeah, ZBrush Summit's coming up, so check that out. And then now that we've gotten through my questions, um, we're gonna go through here and we're gonna go back to our baseball head and we'll talk a little bit about, uh, I think what we did since last time, I made some slight changes. Oh, there's a little thread issue. Uh, so essentially what I did was, I didn't do too much. I just went through and I, I, you know, I changed the direction. So what we were doing, I don't know, we started making a baseball and then that turned into, I put a head on the baseball at the very end. I'm like, oh, that works. And then I started thinking about those 90s extreme advertising things that were, uh, let me see, extreme advertising. Let's see if that brings anything up here. So we'll go to images, this type of thing. You know, the super crazy fisheye lens, um, just nutso things that I remember from the 90s, like this type of thing. Uh, there was actually one, yeah, eagle with a baseball. So this type of ex extreme uh, model, you know, so I figured well, we could do something like that. However, when I first made the model, it was like in the back of his head and it wasn't really framed nicely to like include the bat or anything. So all I did was, Instead of bashing the back of his head, it was going to the side of his head so I can get a lot of his face in here along with the baseball bat. Of course, World Series, go um, Astros or Philly. I don't think they finished just yet. 
Um, I don't know if I've ever watched a baseball game all the way through, but I know that much. Uh, so in here we could like turn on perspective and then if you go in here to draw, you can drop your focal length down to get that really extreme uh, kind of look. So now I can frame this nicely with the information I need uh, for our render as opposed to trying to you know fit it. You can see it in the thumbnail now, me trying to fit what I need to into the frame and it doesn't really work that well. So I'm gonna swap probably the thumbnails out. You know, it's kind of like, I, I want to show the wrinkles on the head, but in the impact, but from that back end and show the bat, but that was not working. So, um, so there we go. And that was just a quick render. So in here, what we did was I did, you know, I changed it. I just bashed it from the side. So I did my dynamic, uh, simulation and just went from the side and then I went through and, oh, the spit. So that was, there's a couple different ways you could do that. You can literally just go in here and you can say, let me grab, um, you go BI brush insert, IMM primitives, grab a sphere, drag it out on here. You can say split mass points. And then now you have a little sphere that you can go through here and you can zero mesh this or dynamesh this, whatever you want. And then you can make a little spit blob. Um, you can also go in here to BSH. Yes. And then turn on Sculptures Pro if you want. And you can go through here and you can do like little sh strings um, for your spit like this, you can just literally just drag out and make little strings and stuff like so, and then go in here and shift to smooth. We'll turn this off. We can dynamesh this Oops, resolution up a bit. There we go. And then now we can go through here and I'm just going to, you know, make some areas thinner, make some areas thicker, just go in here, inflate for thicker, uh, shift for thinner, and that'll kind of give you your little globulates like so. And then if I go through here to BS, spiral you can go through here this is a good brush for just kind of adding a little bit of english on it just swoop, or hold on alt and spin it the other way and that'll give you that really nice dynamic you can go from the top here so it'll do like a little left to right and it'll be like um let's frame it here so like a little, little blah, like it's like spiraling off and actually i like that better than these ones i did um so there's that way you can do it and as far as like these very specific ones where it's like coming from his mouth to his tongue uh, that was just append a Z sphere and then hit, uh, oh, got to select it. Append is going to shoot it down to the bottom. Insert puts it just one below the one you had selected. So I'm going to scale this down. We're going to move this into place. Um, we're going to go into transparency mode so I can see it. And then now we can do a little bit more precise placement. Um, you don't have to do this. You can there's you can use IMM brushes for this too, but I'm just showing you this way. So now we have a little Z sphere. So if I want to hit um, hold down Shift as I drag out a Z sphere, that'll keep it the same size. You don't have to. There's a way to do that underneath Transform. Nope, underneath Stroke Curves Helper. There's a scale Z spheres to draw size. So even if you don't have them all the same size, you can later scale them to whatever draw size you have. So uh, we got this one here, and then I'm gonna hit Q right here, and then again. Hold down shift and move this out. So now we have, you know, very precise placement of our little spit here. So here, here, and here. And then if I want to convert this to geometry, um, all we got to do is go down here. We can hit A for adaptive skin. That'll turn it into like a Dynamesh Geo. If you don't like that for whatever reason, you can go down here to adaptive skin and you can say uh, Dynamesh resolution down to zero. Tap A again to get this. And now you'll get more even geometry density down to one. Here's very simple, even geometry. If you like this, say make adaptive skin. That's going to put this out in just your pool of tools. Uh, so if I want this to actually be used in my subtool stack, because right now we just have the Z sphere in here. If I don't need this anymore, I just delete it. Append that skin Z sphere. So this is real geometry. And now we can go through here and we can say again, shift to kind of, let's turn my Z intensity down my shift. So shift to kind of go through here and be like, oh, that's stretchy, stringy mucus through here and then I can leave the other ones uh, thicker or I can inflate them and then move these around. Um, another way is just to go through here with like a custom insert mesh brush and then just pop out a cylinder and then say split mass points. And again, if you need like stretchy mucus, you can do this. It's just basically taking a cylinder, you can, you can hold down alt in this axis to scale along just that one axis. So now you can go through here and be like, and then, then you just gotta position it. So position this out and then you can like, I don't know, control drag out a thing and then match it and then dynamesh this together or Boolean it, I suppose. Um, this is another thing where you could go in with bend curve and like make it droop a little bit. So if we like split mass points and it's, 
Uh, we can go in here to bend curve and you can be like, I want to droop this down and stick this point here, or twist it or whatever I want to do. Um, you can be very specific about where your stuff goes, but um, in this case, I didn't overthink it, obviously. So here, here, skin Z sphere here, and that was that. Uh, stitches, uh, that was just the nano mesh stitches that we did. Uh, the bat is just modified bat that we made. I think that's it. I think really that's all I did. Uh, aside from, oh, <laughs> you might like this, or maybe not. Um, I did shoot some reference of my face. Uh, let me see, where would that be? Here, here. Just to get an idea, um, it's not a it's not a real human face, but here's me pushing a, uh, <laughs> a cup against my cheek and then making my face generally that look so I can use that as reference just, just to get an idea of how these goopy shapes would kind of work. And then we got all this set up. You'll see everything over here is underscore high. So head high, stitches high, bat high, everything that's visible. So go in here to export and just choose, go in here to bake and we'll choose FBX. Oops. And then under, do this baseball head underscore high. I'm not gonna bother doing it, it's gonna take a while and I don't wanna sit here and wait for it. But F -port, export FBX, I did go ahead and put in like vert color for the bat and the stitches and the head. And then this vert color we're going to just bake out so I can use that as color information. Um, these are from the 1024 scan data that we used. Uh, I split these out, they are still utilizing, if I go in here to texture map, uh, I'll do UV map, nope. Texture map, create new from UV check. These are actually still using uh, the original UVs from the mesh. So I wouldn't, I, I could even just use the textures that came with the 1024 scan data. Um, but I did transfer these to poly paint and I'm just gonna bake off the poly paint. I'm not too concerned about resolution. I don't need 8K resolution for the teeth or anything or the tongue. So I think we'll be in good shape. Um, blah, 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 so export high, and then I went through and did a low res pass, which, yeah, we can look at that, I guess. Let's go out of edit mode. All it, all it really is, um, is if I go through here, I just turn all this off, and I say subtool all low, um, it's, it's basically this. Like there's my low res for this one. Uh, this one was basically how I UV this, was uh, going in here to Z plugin subtool master. Uh, here we go. And then we're going to say uh, work. Uh, nope, not subtool master, dummy. Um, UV master. And then we're going to go in here. So symmetry, it's not symmetrical, but we do have poly groups. And I'm going to say work on a clone. So we can go through here and I'll be like, okay, along this stitch, I want to go ahead and hide a natural seam. Um, around these eyes, I don't need these to be separated, I don't think, so I took all these and just made them into one polygroup, so control W, and then uh, this inside of the mouth I did want separate, so I went ahead and said, you know what, these can all be part of one polygroup, and then the inside of the mouth would be another polygroup, basically where I want my UV seams. The pink, uh, I went ahead and kept as one, uh, including just around the ear here, so control W, and then this ear and this part of the ear, control W, so that's going to be split out. Um, so basically looking for stretching might be an issue. So I'm going to take this version here and we're going to say with polygroups on unwrap and that'll go through and take my polygroups, put those on their own UV islands, unwrap it so there's no overlapping UVs and then we can hit flatten and you'll see the result of that. You can massage this in any program that you want or you can go through here and you can slice through in any UV program where it might make more sense. And we do uh, unflatten, we'll say copy UVs, we'll go back to our original working file, we'll say paste UVs, so that now this thing will have those UVs and then just export that. So essentially that's what I did, was just export all these lows, and again, this isn't real low, this isn't like a game res mesh, because I'm not interested or worried about this being performant or running at 60 frames a second or anything like that, it's literally just a render piece, right, where I want to bake my normal, so polygon size, there is a limit you'll reach on UV Master where it'll cap out at like, if 50K it starts getting interesting, so you see this is just under the 50K points, it'll still work for, a, you know, it'll it'll handle pretty heavy, surprisingly heavy meshes for UVing. Um, of course you can always export that and UV it wherever you'd like. Um, 
Oh yes, this is a, I want to say Grounds and Hounds. It's where we get our coffee. <laughs> I think. My wife got it for me. Um, let's see here. Um, tutorials and sculpting weapons, guns, axes, anything. I'm trying to hurt servers better. I do have some, a bit. Uh, so on my art station page, there's, uh, you know... The Zebra Summit 2018 has some hard surface stuff where this mech was kind of made. The Sci-Fi Weapon series has some old Boolean techniques and kind of... Uh, that's an interesting thing, too. If I'm just concepting... I mean, I got some old stuff. I don't know that it's would be super useful to you, but uh, in here, for example, uh, you know, I did a bunch of really quick weapon concepts, kind of zany weapon concepts for this particular game. Um... But, yeah, there's some commander hearts. Like, he's got that big gun arm, which is kind of hard surface. Um, same deal. I'm trying to think. There is a speed modeling and texturing hard surface where it's just like a really quick dynamesh and set it and forget it and bake it out, throw in a substance painter. Fusion 360, a little bit on there. Uh, yeah, I should probably do more hard surface stuff. It's fun. Um, it, it's, I don't know, it's fun. Uh, but on my YouTube channel, there's some really old, old stuff. So you go in here to videos and then you go by, uh, can you not sort anymore? They updated their interface and now we have recently uploaded and popular. I can't sort by date anymore. Uh, let's go in here and say, gun, uh, rifle, rifle, rifle. Yeah, here's an old, old weapon. <laughs> this is like very, very old. Um, but going through here and just using a couple different techniques to kind of do a block out of a, just to kind of get my idea in the round. And then at this point you could decide, do I want to throw this piece into Fusion 360? Do I want to go through and retopologize this piece? Or do I want to just kind of slice this down? I also have a, you know what, you might enjoy this on my Google Drive. Here's a hard surface kind of linear walkthrough, and if you scroll down, you'll see like artist examples and links to you know presentations they've done, just different ways. Um, here's kind of a brute force, and then here's kind of um, brute force to rebuild um, your Ben Art and your Mike Nash type of concept to final, and then here's some mixed solutions, uh, Chi Bang, Nelson Tai, and Alex O. So I'll, I can put you this link here, share, copy link done. That'll give you some ideas on hard surface stuff. Um, yeah, so I've got some. Probably your best bet is that sci-fi weapon series. Uh, I think. I've also got like the helmet mesh. Uh, again, this stuff is super duper old. There, there's been a lot of updates since then. Like this thing here. <laughs> this is ancient. Uh, but I think there's some videos in here. You know, just kind of making this. This was before like Z Modeler even existed. I think we had flatten brush if I remember correctly. So again, some of this may or may not be relevant. It's still usable, but here's the entire making of that helmet, give or take, on my YouTube channel. Woo. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I need to go and fix those links, I guess. Um, Shonik says, I found around 150k points is breaking point of view of master. That sounds right. I would, I would say that that's probably exactly right. Um, yeah. Yeah, Glitch Gremlin, whenever I'm like, oh, I have a weird cloth issue, or I don't know how to make this look realistic, or how, you know, I, I, pulling from my head or trying to find Google reference or is like a nightmare. What I need to do, though, is get rid of this so I can see my face better. Um, I was just being lazy. I didn't want to go and shave just for a quick shot. Um, but yeah, anytime I have a cloth issue or a face issue, I just use myself. Or I'll bug my wife if it's a female thing. Um... Let's see here, uh, guide an alpha repeating pattern on a curve, uh, floral pattern running on the trim of an armor. Yeah, you should, on a curve that repeats. Yes, that would be a repeating alpha. So for example, if we go in here and we say hi, let's do all high. We got our startup material. I'm gonna turn off this here and we're gonna say, uh, go into your comma key brush, stitch, grab one of these here, 
So if I take this stitch brush and kind of roll over this where that's coming in, so essentially you would have an alpha of your floral pattern that could repeat in the Y direction or the U or V direction, I forget. Um, go through here and you can, basically all you're doing is going in here into stroke and turning on uh, roll. Lazy mouse, nope. Modifiers, yes. Roll and then roll distance. So you can actually roll your alpha as you repeat it. So swap this out with the repeating floral pattern that, that repeats. And then you can, you know, obviously you may want to like alpha and rotate this. So there's your flower. And then you can just kind of repeat this as you drag. If you want it to follow a curve path, that would, I think you can just go in here, I think. Go in here to stroke and then turn on curve mode so that you can drag out a curve onto the shape and then as you pull this it'll kind of stamp through this is going to be kind of nasty there are brushes set up for that so you may have to kind of actually i wonder if roll turned on is actually hurting that or helping that um, but a brush that would do that deco curve drag curve dots so here's curve dots with this so if you change it to this and we say alpha rotate along that curve uh, it's not going to repeat though you know what might be better is if it's geometry and then you can just drag it out and repeat it and then do a uh, doing a bar relief wouldn't really work you can maybe do booleans or a dynamesh that gets tricky um because yeah you can frame a mesh and then have an alpha but then an alpha along a mesh is a little bit hard to control um because that's going to stretch it out along the alpha, isn't it? I don't know that it'll repeat, because this is going to be... I guess it is repeating that. So you would have to go in here and say, I don't know, lazy step up. Uh, I don't remember exactly how to control these. <laughs> let me see if I have... Let me see if this guy has any information. Um, what is that? Deco curve. Deco curve dots brush. Deco curve drag dot brush. Poly painting with deco curve brushes. Yeah, some of these might help. I don't know. That's a tougher one. That would be something I'd have to sit down and think about. I'm not great at thinking. Um, as you were all aware by now. Uh, have you any friends from India who use zebra? Sure. I mean, I'm using I, 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 people I generally know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they'd want me calling calling myself their friend, but yeah. Um, did you do the latest Zebra's version of Max update recently? Feel it's slower with update. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen an update recently. The 22.0.6 update. Um, it's the last one I have. Um, not sure. I don't really remember what the release notes were on that. I have to go back and look. Um, the workflow for the ball impact on the bat was literally just going in here with a my ball head. Oops, let's go up here to something that doesn't have insert mesh history. So there's my ball head. We're going to say split mass points. W, let's hit control D a couple times. So, you know, here's my... Go in here, turn off RGB. Uh, oops. Stroke, curve brush, off, lazy mouse off so uh boy i messed up all my brushes brush down at the very bottom reset all <laughs> there we go so here's my uh bat head so now if i take this then i go in here to my dynamics and then i turn off uh i don't really need to turn off gravity but we're gonna say you know i'm gonna turn on a collision volume and you know what just to speed this up oops i'm going to say here's my head and here is my bat and then anything else in my scene is going to be a collidable piece of geometry. So we're going to say turn on collision volume. I'm going to turn that inflate down to zero. So that as I move this, I'm going to go to BTC, which is transpose cloth. And I'm going to move this down. It's going to go. There you go. So that's that's exactly how I made that bat head. Again, if you were just joining us uh, on my YouTube channel, go to videos. Here's the last one um, that we did. And that shows the entire making of literally step by step of the entire baseball uh, warts and all. Um, it was just an on the cuff, off the cuff live stream, so it's not like perfectly tutorialed out or anything, but good enough. So we'll delete that.
Um, let's see here. Um, let's see, are you practicing ZBrush every day? No, not at all. Just, you know, once a month for my live streams lately. Uh, work on 3D printing. So, so it was Booleans work for me. I don't imagine I have to retopo for 3D printing. Yeah, no retopology retail for 3D printing. And yeah, Booleans are great for that type of thing, especially if you want to do like key registration or making a watertight mesh. Uh, Booleans are awesome. You can use DynaMesh in some certain situations, Booleans and others, depending on what kind of envelope you need to create. Uh, but yeah, Booleans will be excellent for that. Um, putting fur on a human leg like a werewolf for 3D printing. Um, that would probably be something like chisel brush, organic, use a VDM. Uh, especially if it's going to be for, like, because you can use, you know what, I don't know, use it. Like, here's these animal furs right here. So just go through here and be like, you know, here's my layering of animal furs and then go and swap these out as needed to kind of get you some variation. Something like that. So then it's all one watertight mesh. You're going to have undercuts. So if you wanted to <laughs> make a 3D print and then do an injection mold or something, you're going to have some issues. But um, something like that. Yeah, and I do, I mean, you can use fiber mesh for some stuff like that. If you go to my ArtStation page and scroll way down here. This was 3D printed. So this is the original Eat 3D cowboy thing that I made. And then here's the... Um, you know, this was fiber mesh, but like, man, you have to make those things into like tubes, you know, fine hair. Now you could do fiber mesh and then dynamesh it together and then go back over it and sculpt it with like slash two and any hair brushes you like to use. So you can maybe do a hybrid, but, um, add vert on an edge in Z modeler. I can do it in Blender, but I'd rather do it in ZBrush. Yeah, uh, it, so ZBrush doesn't really handle, it doesn't allow you to do end gons so it's a little bit trickier, but for specifically, um, select, alt tap, solo, polyframe, skin shader four. So we have an edge here and we we'll want to put a vert on it. So you can go over here, you can say uh, split edge and you can just split that edge and then you have a vert on that edge. Um, in fact, if we go through here and say delete hidden. Um, so you can go through here and you can like, again, you can just split an edge and you're good to go. However, uh, there's also a ZM slice brush. If you go into your comma key underneath brushes, Z modeler there's a slice in here and a topology in here. Essentially what you can do with Z modeler brush, which is kind of cool is, so I have a, a Z modeler brush and it's like, you know what? I want a hotkey for uh, face extrude. So we'll say like extrude a single poly, if that's what you want. Or in Z brush, a lot of times I use poly groups. So I'll say, you know, extrude poly group all. Uh, okay, so what all you need to do is take your Z modeler brush and then save that out, brush, save as, throw that into your Let's see, brushes, ZBrush 2022, sorry. There we go. Z startup brush presets, throw it in here as Z modeler extrude. And then uh, whenever you start up ZBrush, you'll have a Z modeler brush that you can go in here, hold down control, alt tap, and then assign a hotkey to the to switch to the Z modeler brush extrude. However, because it's Z modeler, you have access to not only face options, but also edge options and also point options. So if I go and assign a hotkey to ZM slice, I'm like, I want to slice through stuff. Now that's going to set my edge action to slice mesh, my point action to slice mesh, and my face action to polygroup fill. So now I can go through here and say, I want to slice from this edge to this point, to this edge, to this edge, uh, back to this point here. And then I in, now I have a crease line so I can hit this face and fill that polygon without having to go through and assign hotkeys to those three different actions. Uh, same thing with topology. So if we go in here to brush ZM topology, um, for example, if I just do this real quick, BTO, and we just put some topology on this plane, um, and we'll make this small, and we'll tap off, and we'll say split mass points here. Now we have a topology plane. So now if I use my topology brush, my ZM Z modeler topology, over the face, it does nothing. Over the point, it is set to move by brush radius and it's gonna to snap to my surface. If I go to edge, it's gonna be set to extrude, edge loop, snap to surface. So now I can go through here and I can extrude and snap to my surface as I go. 
like so. And then as I get closer to another edge, it'll go through and snap boop, for me. So I can pull this out. And if I want to snap these two together through a point, I have point actions turned on. So as I move a point, it'll go through and snap. So very quickly, I can kind of go through and topologize and snap to a surface and use ZModeler as a topology brush just based on point, edge, and face actions. Face actions, in this case, doing nothing because I don't want it to. So delete, delete, on. Um, so yeah. Um, getting with such a weird result with a normal map 3D bits. Do you use them? Uh, occasionally, if I'm baking like the super high res 1024 stuff, uh, I don't really know that much about it. So, for example, the normal map over here, tangent, adaptive, or displacement. The 32 bit displacement, adaptive, smooth UV. I want to say the last time I used displacement was, or in this, in like from ZBrush to something else, was. If you go here to playlists, let's just go in here. Shooting that over to here, ZBrush Cinema 4D. I want to say I okay, I did. I did use ZBrush displacement. So pretty sure, yes. High res displacement with soft bodies, which is kind of full. I, I, I think they changed their soft body setup, so probably all of this is irrelevant at this point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for what it's worth. Um, right in here, this high-res displacement, I did go through and do 32-bit uh, displacement for that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, cool, thank you, uh, Frederico. I'm glad the videos are helping. Uh, do I make a mentorship? No, I, I don't have the mental capacity for a mentorship, unfortunately, but make some videos. Um, not using ZBrush much anymore. Ah, it's not that I don't use it anymore. I just don't make a lot of content generally. Um, most of the content on my YouTube channel is the couple hours a month that I make stuff. <laughs> That's about it. Um, yeah, we're only about an hour in. Um, that's right. Get back to work. Uh, rest of the month when you're not using ZBrush. Oh, yeah. So lately it's been a lot of Unreal Engine, a uh, little bit of tech rigging stuff. I mean, nothing fancy. The basics of Unreal, the basics of tech rigging. Um, nothing much beyond that. Um, some of the brushes you're using? Yeah, uh, I don't think I'm using any anything spectacular. Most of the brushes that I've used, we've I've pointed out where you can find them. Nothing fancy that we're that we're doing here. Um, edge and rig is rolls. It's not too sure, but does it cut the wear? Can we roll an edge and Z brush? How'd you do that? Um, that would be. Um, so yeah, that would be something like, I'll we'll do this. So you know what, we'll go back to our star. So the star I have in here is always just a name catcher. I put it at the top and then I just hide it in something. And it doesn't have UV history, it doesn't have subdivision history and it can have X symmetry on if I need it. But so now if I go to BTO topology brush, we're gonna go through here and we can just drag lines so that we can get a little bit of topology on here and we're gonna tap off and we're gonna say split mass points. So now we have, um, let's go to solo mode here, Q mesh, uh, Q mesh, poly group ball. Hold down shift to pull along that surface normal. Q mesh, poly group ball. There we go. And then uh, if I wanted to, you could bevel or inset. You could say like inset here. Uh, let's do legacy inset polygroup ball legacy and then q mesh polygroup ball so you can put in a little bevel like that or uh, like we did earlier you can just go through here uh, crease and you can hold that control and put in a little bevel on there uh, you can put a bevel along this line bevel edges of complete if it works so you can kind of again you can soften that transition uh, if it needs to like go out and roll around that's a little bit more difficult i suppose like if i needed to take this and say okay q mesh polygroup ball pull this out and then I need this to kind of pull down underneath um, what my knee jerk reaction is going here to insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation let's turn this so you can see it and then you can go in here and you can say you just click and pull on here so essentially you're just you're, you're, you have interactive elevation on so you can add more uh, resolution and you can pull out or push in to kind of get the shape that you want um, it's going to do it on all the sides so you'd need to figure out a way to 
limit that here. I guess you could go in here and say, you know, let's Q-mesh this out. And then I'm going to say, um, uncrease all group. Uh, we'll just run a polygroups group by normals. I'm going to say uh, crease PG, crease level of 1, smooth subdiv of 2 or 3. And then on here, if you need to kind of roll it, you could say, okay, we'll say crease edge, hold down alt, and we'll just uncrease these. So that'll give it a nice soft transition here. So I don't know, maybe something like that. Uh, we'll do crease level of 1, smooth subdiv of, yeah, I guess that works. So basic box modeling or if you're if you're just kind of getting something done and you're like I don't want to deal with all this stupid stuff um, let me just run a crease dynamic crease level of four smooth so of five or something just whatever um, apply so now we have real geometry so now we have subdivision geometry or if it's just a dynamesh great we can just say it just dynamesh this mesh and a little higher resolution than that there we go and it's like, oh, I need to soften an edge. Um, you can go to the side here and you can try maybe going in here to like clip curve and like clipping an edge here and then holding down shift and smooth it. Or you can go in here to like trim dynamic and you can say, just go in here. If you have a steadier hand than I do, turn on lazy mouse or whatever and you can do this. Um, another option is you can go in here to brush BBA there's bevel arc and bevel flat, so you can go from one side to the other, and then you can actually just brush in a bevel. Um, doesn't really work on something that has any kind of curve to it, so that would be something a little more useful for like cube 3D here. And again, if you want to, oh, make polymesh 3D, um, dynamesh, maybe go in here with your knife curve, knife curve here. This is what I did for my bison. So again, read Dynamesh and a little higher resolution. There you go. So BBA, oops, BBA for bevel arc. You can go from one side to the other and then just do, 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 sculpt an arc here. One side to the other, sculpt an arc. Um, there's, there's bevel flat as well. So BBF and then one, again, one side to the other. Um, you may need to store a morph target in here. So let's go back here. I, I, that transition is going to be tricky anyway, even if I was box modeling it, especially if I was box modeling it actually, but if we go in here to morph target store, then you can go like, okay, here's a flat bevel I want to put in here and then uh, BMG for morph and then you can morph this back out and maybe ease that transition a little bit, trim dynamic or something to kind of make this work. Um, or you could even BBF bevel flat this side to this side maybe and just kind of work between those B and G. I don't know. Figure out how how that transition would work. But um Do you do much destruction environment art like broken uh, I don't do any environment art. Just uh my environment art is Quixel Bridge Mega Scan plop move duplicate. <laughs> That's it. Um I'm doing good JP graphics. Uh, opinion is Blender, a boolean add-on, decal machine, so on software is quite hard to get used to. In hockey's UI, I tried it. Yeah, uh, I tried it a bit. It's fine. It it is useful, for sure. Uh, I'm not a Blender master by any any means, but I have a general understanding of it. But again, I don't really make a whole lot of stuff anymore, so I'd have to go dive deep into it to get caught up. Uh, fit a subtool on another irregular subtool. Fit a Superman logo on a muscular chest. Um, that would be my, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, the most control that I like to have is having an actual piece of geometry. Um, essentially you would, uh, I guess I can just do it real quick. Let's see, tool, um, give me a, just a body here. Uh, for example, we're going to say delete lower and make sure there's no, these things always like to have layers. Uh, layers, bake all. So we have a body here and I want to put an alpha on this chest. So you can go in here, you can just load your alpha into a spotlight, for example. So if we say Z, um, 
Z, you can grab this and then you can say, okay, I want to, you know, make, uh, you can actually Boolean this if you wanted to, so it'll actually cut through. So we can go in here, turn on live Boolean, hold down Alt and then tap and then let's go out of solo mode. So now if we hit Shift Z, it'll actually punch through the object, but all it really is is just a piece of geometry that it made flat for you, uh, BTR. So there we go, we have a flat piece of geometry. Now if we needed to match this to his underlying body, uh, you can go in here and you can say, uh, what is going on here? Live Boolean off, subtractive off. Uh, BMM is matchmaker brush so you can just kind of position your camera here and just click and pull and then I'll match the geometry to the exact chest so you can use that um, or you could go in here to uh, B create insert mesh new and now you have an insert mesh brush of this so as you drag it onto this character dynamic off there we go uh, X symmetry on, I suppose. Uh, go over here to your brush, and you could say uh, modifiers uh, projection strength up to 100, and then as you drag it out, it'll actually kind of warp. Not warp, but um, let's go out of solo mode so you can see it. Um, turn this off. So as we drag this out, it's going to constrain, it's going to stick to the underlying mesh. Obviously, if you have a muscular chest, you can actually drag an alpha onto that chest, then you can extract that, and then uh, Z-remesh it. Um, yeah, a lot of different ways to go about that. Um, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, that's fitting another subtool onto another one, like you were saying, like a, a piece of geometry that you want to conform to another mesh. I think those would be the two I would use, or just create that geometry as an extraction. Uh, well, thank you, Mystery. Um, you're great, too. Uh, you know, for some reason, when I export a surface, I made a Quixel mixer. It doesn't appear in my local library. Did you have an issue? Uh, I haven't really played around with that. Uh, export a surface. Add to your... Um, I'd have to play with that. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Cool. Good luck at work. Um, let's see here. Sculpt something rotated but symmetrical like a bracer on a wrist. Probably, yeah, there's no there's no sense of, um, you know what, stager. I'll just link it to the stager. That'll give you, I mean, instead of me fumbling with it, um, use this. This thing here, copy link address to geometry stager. That way you can work on the bracelet and X-symmetry and then pop it back over to where it's on the wrist and then pop it back so you can have X-symmetry turn on. There's no arbitrary work planes in ZBrush that I know of. Um, let's see here. Cool. Let's see. Cool. Excellent, John. You. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dynameshing losing crisper. There's a better way to go from a lower poly hard surface to a Dynamesh. Um, the resolution on the Dynamesh is going to be dependent. Uh, the crispiness, crispiness of your edges is going to be dependent on your Dynamesh resolution, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, and a Dynamesh is also super destructive on hard surface objects, so if you're... I tend to just box model and then use creasing to control my edges. Um, Dynameshing losing crisp sharp edges, lower poly hard surface mesh to Dynamesh. It, unfortunately, I think that's just a resolution issue uh, if, you, if you have to use Dynamesh. Um, I don't think there's a... I don't think there's a way. You can maybe Dynamesh a lower resolution and then project back to get your edges, but yeah, those triangles on those edges aren't gonna, they're gonna be problematic. Um, cool. Uh, I mean, you know, as far as like the box modeling stuff, it really, you know, when I'm doing like Z modeler stuff, um, it's just, I don't use all of this. You know, I use like four or five things and I know where they are. And it's, I'm, I'm as fast as, uh, this is probably just more about me, my box modeling skills than anything else, but, uh, I'm just as fast in ZBrush as I am in uh, Maya, for instance. In fact, my, uh, faster because there's some bridging and stuff I like to do in polygrouping that I like to do in ZBrush more than I like to do it in Maya with like selection sets and stuff. It's I, And I'm a much faster box modeler in ZBrush, actually, unless I'm doing something very specific. Um, but that doesn't make me faster. It just makes me 
you be able to use some specific box modeling techniques in another program where ZBrush can't do it like Angon stuff. Um, change something about the ZBrush UI, what would it be? Probably like a picture of my face right here, just to remind people how cool I am. I don't really, uh, what would I change? In my ZBrush 2018 summit, I did. I was throwing out stuff that was like, oh, I wish I had this. Um, I can't really think of anything interface-wise. Um, sculpting the head ZBrush tutorial. Uh, oh, there's got to be something. I don't have one, but yeah, Google that. I'm sure there's something online. Uh, we, In fact, in the last video we made the... the yeah, let's get back to that. So delete all. So we've exported, we've exported our mesh here. Uh, and now I'm going to get out of ZBrush and we're going to hop into Substance Painter. We'll have a little bit of fun in there. So in Substance Painter, I have a file already set up. I can take you through the basics. Again, nothing fancy of what we did. Um, you could, you know, so we exported our high res underscore high, exported our low res underscore low from, you know, whatever program you do in your low res and your UVs in. Um, and then export as an FBX so that you have one file of an FBX with multiple objects in it. So when you go in here and you say file new, and we just kind of select our baseball head low FBX and say, okay. Again, I'm not worried about polygons. I'm not worried about this thing being performant. It's literally just polygons with UV so I can texture it. Um, I didn't think it would take that long. There we go, geez. Um, okay, so we have this object in here and then every object in here has its own material. So it's, it's got its own texture set. Uh, so again, I didn't bake these stitches to the underlying baseball. I didn't make a game res. I just said, hey, you know what? The stitches are gonna have their own material and their own texture set. So if I wanna bake everything, I can go in here to texture set settings and I want to do bake mesh maps and I'm gonna load in my high res baseball head high and then you know whatever resolution if I'm going to do like 4096 um, for the head for example I'll go in here to selection and I'll say okay the bat uh, the head the teeth and tongue I don't need honestly maybe the bat and the head I might bake out of the 4096 um, so if we go back here uh, 4096 those two selected uh, for the normal map, I want to say I only want to match by mesh name. In this case, it doesn't matter because they're all split out. But just in case you did need to match by mesh name, you can turn that on. And the occlusion is going to be always so that all the pieces that are stuck together will get an AO between them or near to each other. And then I just go down here and say bake uh, selected texture. So bake bat mat bake selected texture. So that'll go through and bake all my maps for... And there was some bent normal stuff in there we could talk about. I that I've never actually used. Again, I don't hop in here that often, but it'll go through and bake all my stuff that I need from my high to my low. And then when I want to go through and bake another pass on my other objects at like 2048 or something, um, all I got to do is go and turn my resolution down, select those objects, and then bake them out. <laughs> got it, got it, and got it. Yay. So there's those ones baked. And then I'm going to go back into Bake Mesh Maps. And we're going to say, you know what? We'll drop this down to like 1024. Go in here and we'll say eyes and then spit, stitches, teeth, tongue, whatever. Uh, oh, one thing you do need to change is for the ID map, uh, we're going to change it from the source material color to vertex color. So our poly paint will be transferred to our high res object. And then I say Bake Selected Textures and give that a second. Uh, I'm doing good, Jay Ross. Thanks for asking. I uh, tried to reach apologizing. Zebras keeps crashing. You'll be doing something wrong. I'm using Zsphere topo for some reason. I love that method. I that's how I do most of my retopology is Zsphere retopology. Um, I don't get a ton of crashes. Sometimes when I get to a really complex mesh, it'll get a little crashy. But good news is when you crash, you should just be able to load up the Z project from your quick save light box. But um, I don't think you may not be doing anything wrong. It might just be crashy. Um, I've heard that. Um, yeah, yeah, and the complexity of Z model, like I said, there we go. So everything's baked at that resolution. And then again, if you want to go in here to layers, uh, you can hold down control all then right click to go like, hey, I want to select the eye texture set. 
And then in this case, you want the color. You can go in here. So I got a fill layer for the eyes. You can go in here to your search. Just turn everything off and say project texture, or, or even better, project color. Um, or did it world space color ID? Uh, let me think. It should have baked. Actually, you know what? Let's do this file open. I don't feel like troubleshooting right now. Um, cancel. Uh, hold on just a second. File open. Uh, uh, let's see here. What was I working on? Streaming. Baseball head. Bake? No. Textures. <laughs> Date modified. There we go. So, for example, let me make sure this is lined up. A good enough file. Can we see everything? Yeah. Good enough. Um, in fact, we don't even need to see that. We can loop. So, for example, if I go in here and say project, and then I just want to see the color maps for my project color, <clears throat> this will go through here. So, again, if we're on the eyeball here, so control alt, right click. Um, Oh, in this case, we did a little, something a little bit different, so we'll delete this out of here. So we're gonna say, go in here to a fill layer, and we have our base color here. So we have our eyeballs, we're gonna drop that into our base color. However, if I wanted to run a levels on that eyeball and make it a little more poppy, uh, we can do that. So I can say, instead of a, we'll do a fill layer, but I'm gonna right click and we're gonna say, create a fill. So on this fill layer, we're gonna add a fill. We're gonna go in here to base color. I can right click in here and say add a levels and on this levels make sure base color is selected because you can do a levels to any uh, channel. So base color here we can go through here and we can kind of just add a levels to kind of brighten those eyes up a little bit. So uh, and then in the fill we'll do, go down here and we'll say roughness we'll drop that way down so it's nice and shiny and gross. And there's our base. Well let me load up some reference real quick. So we're going to say basically baseball images. There we go here and here. So there's the kind of that poppy little divoted baseball leather texture. Here's the thread for the uh, baseball here, which is right now just kind of rope. And then again, these things here are literally just the baked uh, poly paint. This bat, um, I was stupid and I, well, it is what it is. There, there's a, I have to put a seam somewhere on here. So if I go in here to uh, 2D only, you'll see this is the, there's where his little head splats on it. So there's the ambient occlusion for that. And then I just pop the caps off. However, you know, right in the camera is a huge seam. So what I ended up doing just as a quick fix was we'll go 3D only, uh, just using triplanar. So you can go through here as opposed to saying uh, UV projection and having that seam right there. I just went into triplanar projection and then once you're in triplanar projection you can come in here to 3D projection settings and then you can change um, you know the X, Y and Z rotation where it's projecting from those um, and change the offsets and kind of move stuff around in the scale for each one of those axes so that you can get something okay. Uh, yeah, and I think that's all I've done up to this point. Um, oh, I was supposed to, there we go. There's that link I meant to send in a long time ago. Um, go about doing fleshy models like Freddy's skin and the underlying fleshy meat look uh, probably you know if it's going to be like a layered look what I'd probably do is like do a base layer and then inflate a little bit and then use um, use that I would basically have two different models one inside and one outside and then I would deflate one and then I would brush so that I could have control over kind of the popped out goofy uh, goopiness. You could also use thick skin to kind of take any brush and allow you to kind of, instead of using the layer brush for everything, you could use thick skin to kind of go through and make your goopy pattern on the head. Uh, there might be even some fancier stuff you could do with surface noise to kind of give you a crisscrossed base to kind of start from for that, but I'd have to think about that one or toy with it a bit. Um, Let's see. Um, cool. Uh, Reach positive. Keep crashing. Yes, uh, I am doing good. Thank you. 
uh, selection set during Moto, but Moto's not evolving. Gotcha. Yeah, I like poly poly groups are my super favorite. Um, but you know, ZBrush is limited. Uh, switching from ZBrush to Blend in the future, everything being in one sweep does entice me a bit. I don't really care what I work in, honestly. Like, it, it's you know, at this point in twenty twenty two. We, you know, people get really caught up in like, oh my god, you have to use this program to extrude a face. It's like, uh, you can extrude a face in anything. Granted, there are cool plugins and neat specific things that you can do in certain programs or others, or if you like the feel of a program. Um, yeah, I don't really care. I'll say at this point, I don't care what I make stuff in. It, nothing is rocket science. However, you learn something is just putting in the time, learning how this certain thing needs to work, and then using it. Um, like I said, it's not rocket science. Just sit down and use it. Uh, to do smooth shade. Um, yeah, that's true. You can render with smooth, uh, smooth normals, average normals, I should say. Uh, um, cool. Do you unwrap your stuff in ZBrush or Auto and Substance? Uh, I think I went into. I just did uh, auto. I did. What did I do? I think I used Maya and Hedis. If I remember, I don't think I did anything really fancy. Mostly it was just Maya. But again, it's not like, oh, I went into Maya to use UVs because Maya's UVs are amazing. It's like every UV program that I've used is variations on a theme. You make a cut, you unfold it, you move some UVs around, call it a day. Nothing fancy. Uh, let's see, personal part, you're concerned about the amount of texture sets you have in Sets Spain or should be the lowest possible. Um, maybe? I don't really do a lot of personal projects in Sets Spain, so I haven't run into a huge problem. Uh, designer tutorial, workflow from ZBrush tomorrow's designer for an asymmetrical figure. It wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be any different, so I don't think. Uh, yeah, so in fact, whenever you're doing cloth, I would say instead of doing an A pose, where you have your cloth and then bend the clothing and then bend the figure and have the clothing drag along with it, I would say definitely if you're gonna use Marvel's Lantern, go ahead and put it in the pose, and then uh, then that's when you would do your cloth sim. Um, in the case of this video we did recently, it would kind of be the same thing. I would probably do my posing, so converting geometry to this is all about converting your geometry to you or giving UVs to your geometry and then taking your geometry and UVs in this into Marvelous Designer and having it create the pattern for you that you can just run the cloth sim on um, like so. And it's really fun and easy. Uh, as far as doing it asymmetrically, I think it'd be the same thing. Your pattern may not be as nice as this, so you know what you could do? Ah, let's see. Let's see if I have an avatar thing in here. Uh, what you could do... Uh, did I do that on my YouTube channel? I'm trying to remember. You can add... You can add, you can set up your model, your avatar to have the marvelous designer control points that it needs. Okay, update, fine, whatever. Uh, let's just load the damn program. Um, but there's a better way, or there's a more interesting way, I should say, to do that. If I remember how to do it. Oh, good. Let me knock this down as soon as it's done loading. Where did it go? Come on, man. There it is. Okay, something like this. And if we go in here to File, Import, OBJ, let me see if I just have something sitting around. Uh, body Avatar. Automatic. So open avatar type. Great. So here, okay, good. Perfect. We got a uh, gigantor uh, body in here. So if I want to add, to make this usable, I'm going to say create fitting suit. I'm going to go in here and it'll take me into this interface where I can go through here and I can say, hey, okay, give me a fitting suit. So upper neck here, I want to go from here to here and then down a little bit and go wrap around his neck and then wrap around his lower neck, maybe here to here like so, and then around his arm, here to here, and then around his wrists, here to here, 
elbow here to here. Uh, oops. Messed it up. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Here, here. So that's one. I'm basically just telling Marvel Designer where my model is in space. This is the one I missed. So, um, God, where is his? There's his thigh. I guess here underneath his rib cage. Here to here. And then wrist, you, you. And then elbow, you, you. Shoulder, you, you. And then leg, knee, ankle. Oops. Okay. Apply. So that'll go ahead and shrink wrap a body suit that has all these different body parts. Here. Oh, yeah. Sure. I like the file name of Sure. And then we'll go ahead and close that window. So we have our points here. So if I want to go through here, uh, for instance, and we'll say, okay, let's load up a hoodie. And I want to match. So again, I've got my body. So bring in your posed mesh. Go through that exact same process. That'll tell Marvelous where your body is in space. And then if you have a pattern that you made previously on an A pose, what you can do is say, I want to uh, auto fit this here. I'm sure, whatever. Um, fiddle with the settings if you need to. And that'll go through and put your nice pattern laid out like this onto your posed mesh in space. Or if you're, you know, you know, your body changes and flexes and stuff like that. So now we have our hoodie that fits our Gigantor here. And then we can go through here and modify this as needed. Let's go through and say particle distance of 10 maybe. Select this from Fliss, Fliss Neat Knit Fleece. Uh, down here you can change this to, you know, whatever preset you want. And then go in here and run this. And there you go. Um, looks like there's a little bit of an issue there. But you get the idea, right? Go through here and pull this GR around and make whatever changes you want uh, to get a nice little hoodie thing going. And then you can export this file, export OBJ with your avatar, blah, 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 blah. But something like that maybe. Um, oh, and so for this one specifically, we can say, hey, check this video out, everybody. That'll run you through. That won't run you through those, the putting the pattern on there, but um, feature model already poses you learn how to make clothes more learn. Yeah, that's an easy way to do it. 3D printers. You know, my purpose for 3D printer, whatever they send me for free. So my Nova Benny 5 and my uh, Mars Elgo Elgu Mars 2 Pro. Those are my favorites because <laughs> they sent them to me for free. Um, if you want more 3D printing stuff on my YouTube channel, uh, let me see. I got lychee slicer stuff on there too. Um, let's just do 3D print. They're all in playlists, but yeah, there's, you know, little reviews for the printer and then the lychee slicer stuff all under here, YouTube playlists. Check those out. Um, exporting passes from what pass do you think we should by default export with a sculpt all the time? Um, exporting passes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for instance, uh, render. Here's your render passes right here. Um, the one I... The shadow for sure. Depth for sure. You'll get that for free anyway. Ambient occlusion for sure. SSS sometimes. Sometimes I'll just brush it in as another layer. In fact, if you go in here to Z plugin... ZBrush to Photoshop, this thing will bake out a ton of different passes for different lighting passes too. Um, the manual lighting passes, I, do, I usually just do manual lighting passes, so I'll go through here and make everything black and then give it, you know, base material and go in here to my light and move this around and maybe send it to the back, crank that intensity up, change my specular on my basic material, 
like so, modifiers, specular, crank that up a little bit, and then specular curve down a little bit. And then I would just bake this out, just BPR render this, and then just bake this, uh, or go in here to render, composite, export this as a lighting pass, and then just put that into the screen layer. Um, that might be a new feature, I'm not sure. In order to fit the texture on the eye, on the UVs, did you paint it on a baked UV map? So those were eyes I grabbed from 1024, but really all I did in the last video is uh, skin shader four. Oh boy, late. Send it back around, please. And we'll drop that Z intensity down to 0.8. Um, I literally transferred the texture map of the eyeball to a poly paint, moved the UVs around, and then and then baked the poly paint to the new eyeball UVs. That's all I did. Uh, so I didn't fit it to any previous stuff. I just baked poly paint to vert color. Uh, two materials on one object in ZBrush, and how to assign two different materials to objects. Yeah, it's not going to be super slick. So for example, on this one here, uh, it's got skin shader assigned. If I just go through here and just, oops, make a selection or whatever, and I say I want this material, M color fill object, it'll assign that material to it, or at least it should. Um, or you can paint. Oh, did I not have a material assigned? I might not have. Yeah, I probably didn't. So, okay, for example, MRGB, um, sample this color, color, fill object. And then if you go in here to M, you can literally just, oops, sorry. Um, standard brush, M, paint a new material. So you can go through here and you can paint a material on here or you can assign a different section of this. Again, just color fill with M turned on and now you have two materials on one object. Or if it's, um, go in here, delete lower. Uh, so for example, if you just have another object with this tool, so it's one subtool with two objects, then it's just a simple matter of, you know, assigning whatever on there um, in any, any color that you want to. So um, MRGB fill different materials. Um, cool. Sometimes objects transparency, so transparency and substance, you know something about it. Um, I haven't run into that. You can uh, manually assign transparency, obviously, but I'll look in there. I'll go back in there and I'll say, I'll see if that happens. Um, and it becomes so good. It's like, you know, a solution to every problem. Uh, it's the illusion of knowing the solutions. Uh, my, what I don't know could fill a warehouse. Uh, the biggest warehouse in the world. I, I, you know, when I answer questions, it's usually aimed towards what do I know and how do I answer this based on what I know. But, oh my gosh, if you have somebody that's an actual expert in here, they'd be like, no, don't do it that way. Um, do it this better way. So, again, keep in mind that you're hearing solutions from, consider the source. <laughs> uh, you think we'll ever get real lights in ZBrush? I don't know. Hopefully, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? I, real lights in PBR. That'd be neat. Um, okay, so we have this all here in Substance Painter. Let's go ahead and get rid of Project Color here. Uh, we have, again, just nothing fancy. Control-Alt, right-click to select the texture sets. Um, okay, so let's let's play around with this. If I'm going to do my render, it's probably not going to be in here with, I, you know, you can go in here to iRay, which is totally cool. So throw this in here into iRay. You can change your background, your HDR image that's lighting your scene. Um, but we'll, I would probably throw this into, you know, any any render is fine. Um, but here's the iRay render, for example. So if you hold down con Control, oh wait, Shift right click. There we go. Shift right click to kind of rotate your background around. You can go in here to your, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? God, it's been a long time since I've been in here. Uh, environment map. So we can change this out so that we're in, you know, different, different area. And then we're using this to light our image and we're getting nice ray traced shadows and uh, all that good stuff. So that's one way you go through rendering stuff, but you probably going to export your textures out and render it in something else. That's probably what we're going to do today. If we have enough time, uh, we got 30 minutes left. So we'll switch this back to our panorama uh, and we'll hop back out of IRA and we'll figure out uh, what else we want to do. So I'm going to grab a frayed baseball. 
kind of a dirty frayed baseball look here something like this so you know a little bit of dirt a little bit of sand a little bit of scruff um, and then also I need to go through here so I put uh, if we go on to my stitches here and we say uh, 2d only you'll see they're just, <laughs> just a bunch of stitches laid out you know nothing super fancy but uh, since the UVs are all going in one direction I can actually use the rotate uh, and the reason I went with the uh, rope as opposed to just the fabric is because it does kind of look like it is made up of like little frayed little ropey things, you know, so I figured that would work. Uh, so we'll go back in here to 3D only. Uh, so we got a ropey look, however, uh, color's not right. So I can just do a color sample right onto the red from my image and hopefully update that. And then technical parameters, hue saturation, shift color, attributes, nope channel mapping note so this is we have some presets in here pristine thin rope maybe pristine thin and then we'll go in here and we'll do uh, rotation so I'm going to take this rotation and we're going to rotate this around so that the rope fibers are kind of going kind of threading themselves past so now it looks like I got a nice little ropes making up this object and then I'm going to go back down here again and just try to see if I can't make this uh, reddish and Damaged area, damaged area down, shift, shift, nope. Roughness, oh, that's just a roughness value. Um, saturation, maybe. Hue shift contrast, luminosity down a bit. I don't know, just trying to like dial in kind of that stitches look and still get a little bit of ropey stuff going on in there. Uh, and this one again, not set to triplanar, set to UV projection because my UVs are actually the direction I want. Uh, triplanar would just project textures down. Uh, okay, so for the baseball head, uh, we can go in here to our head and we'll drop, uh, give ourselves a little bit more room. So if I want to put a dirt in here, I can go through, uh, you know what, I have a dirt set up for this already. I'll just walk you through that. We'll go in here to dirt, simple dirt. So I'm just going to drag this on here. And all this is is a uh, fill here uh, with a grunge map plugged into the uh, color here. So here's here's grunge dirt thin on the color map. Uh, then a gradient applied that says, okay, so for each of the black, white, and gray values, and you can add more color quantities in here, you have different colors of dirt, and then you have a hue saturation. So if I want to go through here and change the hue of the dirt or the saturation of the dirt or the lightness of the dirt. So it's, I'm kind of getting a mottled dirt look, uh, and then it's going, because the mask is dictating where this goes, uh, it's just a generator. So right click, add a black mask, add a generator, um, and then the generator is just dirt. Of course, you can do custom masks, all sorts of cool stuff in here, but then you can change your dirt level. So it's basically just coming in where uh, the ambient occlusion is, which in this case is okay, uh, but I might go in here and just do a pass where I say add a paint layer uh, and then go in here maybe to a paint br a dirt brush and then we'll come in here with like a big old dirt brush and we'll um, kind of use this to kind of paint dirt where it needs to go. Uh, in this case, it's painting black, so I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to paint white, and then now as I'm painting, if I hold down Alt and Tap, you'll see, you know, I'm painting a dirt mask on here, and it's going to this, and then if I hit M, you'll see that's where dirt's showing up. So you can add in a, uh, a dirt generator, which will look at your maps, like your ambient occlusion maps and your cavity maps, and then dial in dirt level from that. And then on top of that, you can go in and do a little bit of custom painting on here to kind of just model in uh, some dirt or just like, stamp in some dirt or whatever, uh, just to kind of get the look you're going for. Um, in this case, he does have a baseball head. We might might make him fleshy, might not, I don't know. Uh, for the inside of his mouth, if I wanted to paint, uh, I would probably go over here to 2D only, just so I can get a little bit more access to the inside of his mouth, which is, I want to say, this one here, let's see. So if I go in here to paint, here turn on X and I paint out this. Oh, if you're also gonna be painting in UVs, maybe right click, go down here to your brush. I think this is better. Go in here from tangent wrap to UV so that while you're painting, it doesn't accidentally project to other areas of your mesh. It'll just use your UVs. 
something to consider. So we'll go back in here, change our alignment back to oop, tangent wrap. Oh, damn, did I mess that up? That's okay. And then we'll go in here to 3D only. Goodness, there we go. Um, yeah, so that was my interior of my mouth section there. So if it's easier to kind of paint, and if you want to just isolate this, um, you go in here and just isolate this out. So now you can just kind of paint in here. So if we wanted to do like a fleshy uh, mouth area, I'm going to do another fill layer here. Um, you know what? We could even do a fill layer that goes exactly to where that those constraints are. So if I do a fill layer with just like a darkish red, and we say roughness, so it's nice and shiny. And then we say, okay, where do I want this to go? Right click, add a white or black mask, doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll do add a black mask, and then I want to put it just in this area. I think if I go over here, we'll add a paint, so we can always change it or modify it later with other stuff we can stack on top of it. So we'll add a paint layer or a paint uh, adjustment. And we'll say, uh, go over here to select polygon fill and I go over here to UV chunk fill, white, boom. So now all of this UV chunk is now filled with um, that. So now I can go to this fill layer here and we can say, yeah, let's make this a little bit lighter. So there's the inside of the mouth here. Uh, however, you can see that the little pebbling is still showing up from the baseball head and I don't want that. So when I go control G to group this, we'll say, inner mouth and we'll call this base and then on inner mouth I'm gonna switch over here to high is it height I don't know let's take a look so the leather grain here uh, if we go in here to height and I say okay good it is height so linear dodge I, I do have this actually dialed down a bit so that it's not super um, strong so this is leather big grain by the way if you need more stuff you can hop in here oops that's community you can hop in here to this button and you can search for leather and you can just grab all different kinds of leather. I just had a leather that was loaded up. So I'll just go over here and say leather, uh, big grain, just drop it on here. I don't want to replace anything. So I'm just going to drop it over here. So here's leather, big grain uh, going up here. Oh, I did, you know, I did do something a little bit weird. I did a, uh, added a fill. So this one here, I'm just going to turn all this off. So I've added a leather big grain fill layer with leather big grain. And on leather big grain, I went through and I, sorry, this is fun to say. I went through and I tiled this up. However, this is pebbled outwards, right? And on a baseball, at least according to my, um, oh, I don't have it anymore. But when you looked in here, it was kind of bumped inwards. So what I did was I go to the height, go in here add a levels and then for the height just go in here and say invert so now it's bumping inwards and then on this uh, fill layer with height selected come down here and just dial that back um, so that's how I did that um, anyway inner mouth we want to go in here to height I'm gonna swing just to linear dodge to normal and that way it'll override everything in this folder to override that pebbly look so now we have a nice smooth interior so inner mouth and we can, so we have this and it's pretty harsh uh, transition between the inside of the mouth. Um, you don't really notice it too much, but uh, if you want to change that again, that's why we put it on a paint layer. So you can right click in here and say, uh, add a filter, and then you can add a blur here. So that'll kind of blur out that mouth transition here. So we can say blur, and then we can blur that transition a little bit more. Um, even on top of this, I don't know if you necessarily really need to do this, but you can add another filter here and maybe give it like a warp so in here so you can actually you know go through and dial in like a little bit of even more crinkly break up here um yeah 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 and in fact yeah let's fix some of this stuff here because we have some pretty intense that simple dirt is just going nuts on these ambient occlusion areas so again i'm going to tap x so we can paint out the dirt and in fact we'll go back to our brush here and we'll just go to the uh, basic hard. I'm just gonna kill this dirt inside the eyeball and stuff. Cause really I can go through here and manually paint uh, some of that. We wanna keep that nice and goopy. Um, 
yeah 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 something like that so we'll turn everything else back on control alt uh, we'll just go out of solo mode here um, so yeah inside of the mouth bumps outside of the mouth uh, if we're doing anything transparent or anything like that in here what we need to do is add it oh man see if I remember how to do this so we have main shader we need a different type of shader for like the spit for example um, so we're going to say uh, for spit Oh, Mike, remember, you know what? who I need in here is Wes McDermott. I would say, Wes, take over from here. Um, <laughs> instance name, I need to... Oh, come on, Pav, you remember this. What is it? Um, this one here needs a different shader. Uh, I want to go in here and say, you need to be something else so we'll just select it we'll say pbr metal roughness with alpha blending and we'll just select it it's still called main shader though and that's that probably was sent to everything so what i probably need to do is say give me um transparent so we'll make an instance for this and this will be with alpha blending and then for this stuff here this can go back to just regular pbr Metal roughness. Oh, that's the instance name is still transparent. I don't remember how to do it. There's a way to have it just be uh, one material just for that texture set, but I don't remember how to do it. Anyway, but now that we have transparent, and I guess we can just use it for everything, doesn't really matter. Um, now we can go in here to our layers. Uh, again, for spit, we'll just control out, right click this. We'll give this a fill layer, and in our channels, I think we need to go in here. We'll add a channel called uh, Scattering Translucency, I think. What shade are we using? Oh, it did switch to PBR Metal Rough. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll go Alpha Blending. Uh, okay, so now that we have that shader, we can go in here and we'll have some more. So Translucency we don't necessarily need, but we can go in here and we can say Opacity. And then with opacity, um, yes. So now we have underneath our layers here, we have a fill layer, and now we have an opacity we can turn on. And as I drop opacity down, it'll go through and drop the opacity down on this. So if we just make this into uh, roughness down, base color, black, like the refraction, refraction and reflection and stuff. Uh, again, eye ray. Uh, I already might have some settings in here that deal with that nicely. Maybe. Uh, and uh, refraction and reflection. IOR 1.5. You can change that to be water. Hmm. I don't, I don't really deal with this a ton in this program, so I'm a little bit out of my element. So that's something I'd have to go back and relearn. But something like that. I don't know. You guys figure it out. Um... Go in here and put this color back. What else? I think that's it. I think that's about what we would do um, as far as Substance Painter. Just go in and have fun and do your texture storytelling textures. Uh, actually, let me look up a worn baseball bat images. Yeah, something like this. So go in here. And, um, you know, we'll try to do maybe some of that stuff. Uh, go in there and give that bat some wear. Um, okay, getting back here. A way to cut, throw mesh like mask or customized form, not line or normal shapes. Cut, throw mesh, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, the back face calling parameter is when you're going through here and you're brushing. Uh, so, for example, we're on uh, this fill layer and we say add a black mask and then we want to kind of paint on this mask. So we go to a add a paint. Uh, so we're going through here and we have a uh, brush here and we right click and this will make it so that, um, so it's at 90, okay. Uh, basically if you turn this off, it will just kind of it'll just kind of paint through an object but this one will stop it from painting kind of like uh, in zbrush uh kind of the exact same thing if we go through here like for example our cylinder here and we'll say make polymesh 3d 
and we'll say inset poly uh, flat island legacy. So inset this, and then we'll switch this to uh, polygroup island, and we'll inset this. Ah, you know what? We'll just draw this straight back. Q mesh polygroup ball. Pull it back, and then we'll say uh, crease PG. Actually, we'll just run a crease to launch dynamic apply, and then we're going to say resolution up a little bit for a dynamesh so this is just a dynamesh mesh and if I go through here and I hold down control it'll kind of mask over this however if I hold down control we go in here to depth and we say uh, turn on depth mask you're limiting the amount it can kind of go um, it's kind of this this functionality right here so if I start masking on this side it'll kind of stop at that edge it won't bleed over uh, same thing for this if I start masking here it'll kind of stop at that edge. That's the back face culling angle, basically, is what it's doing. So, something like that. Uh, way to use the curve brush frame poly border store STL hard surface information to create areas that are filled with poly paint to create poly groups. Frame poly group border. So, you have a border and you want to frame it. So, if we go back here, for example, so we have a poly group border. And we want to frame our polygroup border, so stroke, um, curve functions, frame our polygroup border. To store, hard surface to create areas to be filled with poly paint to create polygroups. Usually, if I'm going to do something like that, it would be instead of poly painting to get polygroups, it would just be getting polygroups on the normal angle. Um, so in this case, you would say uh, group by normals, and then you would dial a, so poly groups on the poly group menu. There's a group by normals option, and then you would just dial in this max angle to grab more or less. So for instance, if we go through here and we say um, we could put a big fat bevel over here, and then if we say um, group by normals, it might not pick it up. So you'd crank that max angle down, and then it'll pick it up as a separate poly group uh, and this is an instance where too if you want to go in here and say you know insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation keep poly group you can go through here and just kind of round this out like so um and now yeah de now definitely since those angles are so small if even if we go in a group by normals with a smaller max angle it's still not going to pick it up but in that instance i probably don't um now if it was something like you know crease pg dynamic apply dynamesh this is going to be tougher you know so here's Here's my Dynamesh, hit Control W, make it all one poly group. We'll go in here and turn off a line. Um, you can still use group by normals on here. I may might turn on open circle and then group by normals again, and that'll go through and give you poly groups. So even if it's a Dynamesh, it'll still give you generally poly groups where you need them. If you need to clean up these edges, uh, probably a faster way to do that is just masking, mask by your groups again. Maybe grow that mask a little bit depending on the density of your mesh and then go in here control tab to invert that polish by features maybe open circle and just tap that a couple times so that now you'll get nice smooth stuff and then even though this is a dyna mesh um, if you have x symmetry turned on and it's symmetrical in fact we could even do transform symmetry in the x and z zeria mesher uh, we're going to go from 319,000 polygons down to I'll say adapt to size down quite a bit. Target pocket count of five is probably fine. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. We just smooth them, or Z remesher. Um, we can take this Dynamesh, gross Dynamesh mesh with polygroups and then use those polygroups to indicate where we would like those polygons to be. So now just half, you know, we'll do adapt to size down to zero and then we'll just Z remesh this back down. So even with a nasty Z remesh mesh, you can still come out with something like this. Um, and then you could do like, you know, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth set of three, and then now you're back to kind of where you started. Not that I would necessarily do that. Uh, what I would probably end up doing, if you want really, really nicer results, go in here to make poly mesh 3D. We'll go ahead and say, um, use as many poly groups as you can. Uh, so for example, we'll say um, poly groups, group by normals. So we have poly groups on all of these. We'll say uh, crease PG, we'll hit D for dynamic so that we have a nice smooth result. If I control drag this out and we say split mass points, I'm gonna drop this down below. We'll go ahead and scale this down. And just to show you an example, um, let's do Shift D to turn off dynamic temporarily. I'm gonna pop this one off, delete hidden. We'll do a close convex hole and we'll just kind of pull out and kind of give myself a different type of shape. And even on here, maybe we wanna do, you know, we'll say poly group, poly loop here. Oops, you and you. And you know what, let's just get rid of this. You know, whatever, delete hidden. 
uh, close convex hole. Just punch that through. Control W. Let's make that more obvious. There you go. And we'll say again inset um, inset inset polygon island legacy. We'll inset this. Maybe yeah, we'll just push this back. Q mesh polygon ball. Like so, so we got again polygroups everywhere, different colors for every every single surface change that we want, right? Um, and that's important so that when we go through here, and again we want to do maybe a crease PG, turn on dynamics so it's nice and smooth. Uh, take this object here and push this in, and of course we'll make this subtractive. Turn on my boolean. So instead of doing dynamesh, I would do something like this so that I can go in here and say boolean dynamic subdivision make boolean mesh. That'll give us our U mesh here. Again, this is symmetrical. You always want to turn on symmetry if it is an actual symmetrical mesh. So if I go in here to um, geometry modified topology mirror and weld in the X and Z, totally symmetrical. So I'm going to turn on X and Z so that sub sub tool or um, Ziri Mesher can go through and be like, okay, I know what symmetry you want. So we'll say, in this case, we don't have a ton of polygons, so I'm just going to say half to size down to zero, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, Ziri Mesh, and that'll give me um, a Ziri Mesh of this. So I can say, you know, Ziri Mesh half and even come close to maybe even doing a game res if we want to. Um, if you don't like these caps, it's not a big deal. Just delete them out of here and then come back in and do, uh, you know, close convex hole. There you go. And then from here, you know, let's say bevel. Now, now you have better geometry to go through here. And again, put in a big old bevel, insert single edge loops or multiple edge loops, get rid of that one. Maybe slide this edge, uh, edge loop complete over. And again, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, pull this out, round it off, whatever you want to do. Um, you can make these all one polygroup if you want. And then now you can go through here and say, you know, crease PG, crease level of two, Smooth subdiv of three, give yourself a nice result. Um, again, booleans or dynamesh, but booleans probably preferred to give you a clean result, zero mesh creasing. Just to kind of get your end shape, a controllable end shape. Um, match the lights in suspender viewport with the actual lights in Marmoset UE because my iPhone have an issue where the textures don't look the same in any of the renders of SP viewport. I want to say there's an answer for that. Do I know that answer? Probably not. Um, I want to say, I'll have to get back to you on that one. There is a way to match it with... In the old days, it was like Rec. 709 maybe. Uh, color profile in your display settings. Um, but I don't think you even need that anymore. I think there's a different way to do that. But that, I vaguely remember something like that being close. Um, uh oh, my cam is bugged. Oh no, let's turn it off. Turn it off. Sorry about that. I'm not sure why it does that. Um, let's say properties. Now let's swap this out. Sorry. Fix? No. Well, you just got frozen face. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Get back at this. Uh, so the one we're in, this is Substance Painter, and then we were in ZBrush. Um, Blender, so many brushes. Obviously, I haven't seen yet. No, it's not Blender. Uh, use case I have for this. Importing an STL from SOLIDWORKS model that I want to DynaMesh, but maintain those hard surface to add resolution to hopefully Ziri mesh better. Um, if you're bringing an STL from SOLIDWORKS, uh, for example, I don't know if I have Fusion 360 on this machine. Same kind of deal as SOLIDWORKS-ish, but um, I would use the exact same thing I did. I would treat SOLIDWORKS as like a Boolean uh, go through and then group polygroup by normal angle. I don't know if this is going to open, or if I even have it. I don't know that I have Fusion 360 set up on this machine. If I do, I'll walk you through it. Yeah, we're coming up on 8 o'clock. Okay. <sighs> I can keep fiddling with my camera while this opens. Um, video capture properties, cam link EOS. Camlink 4K. Um, off. On. 
Oh boy. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna delete that out of here and we'll make a, why is this taking so long? Make a new video capture device. Properties. Yeah, it is just not working at all. All right, sorry about that. Okay, there we go. We got. <laughs> uh, okay, go cool, good. I got a trial. I can just use that for now. So, for example, let me. Uh, where is it? What the hell is it? Okay, this isn't even mine. Okay, that would be explain why. Um, hmm. Uh, can I get rid of this? I, I don't, I really don't need this. There it is. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, we have a CAD model we want to make. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say, create a sketch. I'm going to create a sketch on this bottom plane. And in this sketch, we're going to make a thing and it's going to be, this is where you can get real precise. We want it to be like 110 or 111 millimeters by 88 millimeters boom it is exact we're gonna go in here and create a thing i want this to be exactly 25 millimeters because i'm i'm doing such important things so i'm going to say okay this is good uh we're going to go through here and we're going to say finish our sketch we're going to right click this we're going to say push pull and we're going to rip again you know maybe we want it 16.5 millimeters dial it in uh how do i use this program again okay this and then shift no alt um Navigation, how does it work? Shift middle mouse, that makes sense. Uh, Alt, shift middle mouse, okay. I remember how things work now. So now if we go through here, uh, we can say, uh, we can do a chamfer and then we can say exactly how many millimeters we want that chamfer, 2.5 obviously. And then uh, on these edges here, we can say U and U, maybe we wanna do a uh, fillet instead of a chamfer. And again, because we're being so precise, we're working for NASA, 10.25 millimeters beat that zbrush so we've got our shape here and in fact maybe we want to go in here and insert a um, McMaster car component because again we're doing NASA work so I want to put a screw bolt in here uh, you know what we're gonna do a round head screw um, Phillips head round head screw and it's got to be 5 16 fully fully threaded uh, we'll bring in a step model and we'll say uh, download to our file because again we are hardcore craftsman engineers. So, okay, we have a, a screw in our scene. Um, and there you have it, folks. Um, and if I want to, and here's the thing too, is in my, I guess it's been a while, but uh, for example, somewhere in here in my playlist down towards the very bottom, because it's so old, still relevant, I think, is here's the Fusion 360 Quick Start Guide, and in fact, special attention on video 12 so you can go back and forth from fusion 360 to zbrush back to fusion 360 uh, make something in zbrush really quickly and then make it for real in fusion 360 you can even do solid body conversion from your quad box modeling and zbrush in fusion so again it's been a while um so we have this uh in fact even in here if you wanted to go in here and do uh for go design to render there's even a built-in little render in here. So you can say, hey, give me some render settings in this design. Nope, we need uh, in-canvas render. And then for my render setup, I want to say we want to do, yeah, plastic, transparent plastic, uh, acrylic. There we go. So you can actually do pretty decent renders right here natively. Uh, within Fusion 360 if you wanted to. But we're gonna go back to our design here. We're gonna go up here and we're going to say, um, save as mesh, uh, refinement options. This is where you change your normal deviation. So the lower this is, kind of like in Marvelous Designer, the lower your, which we don't have open anymore, uh, the lower your particle distance, the closer the particles are. So that's the particle distance is if it's five, it's only five units apart. So they're actually pretty compact. There's, there's a lot of them. If it's 20, they're far apart. So it's gonna be not as high resolution. Same thing with this, the lower the normal deviation. So we change this to medium, you see it's jump to 15. Uh, high is 10. If you wanna go lower than that, you can say five. And essentially that's going to dictate how circular uh, your stuff is. So we'll call this 
whatever STL, and then we'll hop back into Z ZBrush. So instead of doing live booleans and stuff, we went and did it in uh, another program. So we go import desktop, whatever STL. That'll load it up, thank you. Yay, so we have our STL in here. So first things first, I don't need the screw as part of it, so I'm gonna say split hidden, but if I did wanna go through and say B, create insert mesh new, um, now we have an insert mesh brush of this thing. So if I wanted to go through here, and again, you can just hold down control to snap it all to the same size. You can inset something and put these all in rivets. And in fact, if we go through here, and we ch change our embed depth down. So when we drag this out and embeds, and we'll embed it a little bit more. So just so that it's, sorry, it's a little bit trial and error, but something like that, maybe a little bit more. So negative 60. There we go. So there we go. So now we have this. So in fact, I'm going to put rivets all along here with that screw. So for example, I want to convert this, right? Uh, instead of dynameshing, we're just going to go through here and do our group by normals, make sure it captures all of the different angles that we need. It's not symmetrical, unfortunately, so we can't use that, but we can still zero mesh half, half size down to zero, keep group smooth groups down to zero, and then, ooh, maybe same. I want a little more resolution than that. There we go. So we have our new mesh here. We can say, you know, crease PG, dynamic, crease level two, or three, smooth set to four. And you still have uh, all of this stuff available to you. So if you want to say, hey, you know what? I want to make some changes to this. We'll go in here, insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and then we'll say inset, polygroup island, or all legacies fine. Go through here, we'll inset this, and then Q mesh this in, hold down shift to pull. Again, crease PG, crease level of three, smooth set to four. So, or if you want a bigger fall off, crease level of two, smooth set of three, or whatever you need to make. Uh, and then if you wanna do different creasing. So we have our object here, but I wanna maybe put in, you know, rivets all along the top here. So this is where I might I might duplicate this off. Um, we'll go through here, we'll say Control Shift to isolate this, Control Shift S to shrink, Control W. So now I'm gonna take this, let's go into solo mode, Control W. So now I have a polygroup border that I can follow. Uh, so we'll do Shift D. Uh, so now I can say, again, stroke, uh, nope, let's go back to our brush. So here's our insert mesh brush. Uh, I'm gonna go to stroke, curve functions, frame or polygroup border, and then now I can go through here and again, just kind of tap on, oh, oh, oh. Uh, we need to turn on curve uh, for this object, stroke, turn on curve mode for this object, and then we're gonna need to pay special attention to the curve step. So that's gonna be how many of these things it places along. Uh, that's way too many, and also the brush size may be a little bit bigger. And then we're going to go in here to stroke curve step, maybe 2.52. <laughs> and uh, there we go. So now we've got these things all on there. So I'm going to tap off. I'm going to say split mass points, go into solo mode, control shift. We'll go in here to select lasso and alt, and then geometry modified topology delete hidden. Um, there was another question I had in an email that I just remembered just now. It's about something like this type of creation. So if you want to make like a hexagon sci-fi muscle, uh, we'll go through here, we'll just say make polymesh 3D, control shift, I'm going to do a slice here. So I say I want the muscle to go to here, to here, whatever, isolate. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, just to get nice even quads. And I want to put hexagons along this muscle mass, right? So we're going to go in here to geometry, dynamic, smooth subdiv down, micro poly, and I think there's a hex in here. If there's not, you'd have to make one. Hexagons can kind of notoriously be a little difficult to tile correctly, but here's like a hex tile on here. Yeah, I knew that was gonna be a problem. We can say maybe a line. Oh, okay, that worked. So here's our muscle mass hexagon here. If you need less, just zero mesh half, give yourself bigger polygons, uh, maybe run another align. And then if you go in here and you say, hey, I want more, you can do a smooth subdiv and get more. So once you're done with this, you can say, okay, dynamic, apply, and now you can go through here and add thickness or anything like that, um, which you can extract, you can do a panel loops, that's kind of a fun one to do. So we'll go in here to geometry, edge loop, panel loops, uh, maybe three loops here, uh, polish down to nothing, bevel up a little bit, elevation we'll put right in the middle, bevel profile, let me see if we just do it, panel loops. Yeah, okay, so maybe a little more thickness. There you go. So now we have our muscle panel loops here. So I'm just gonna run a crease on here, dynamic, uh, 
on dynamic though, it's replacing every face again with a hex, which we don't want. So I'm gonna go back to my dynamic settings here. So geometry, dynamic, we're gonna say turn micropoly off, and then on this one we'll say smooth subdiv of two or something like that. And let's go back in here, increase, tolerance lower, lower, ugh, damn. Uh, you may, unfortunately, it looks like, so if you increase all, it's fine. Um, crease. We can get kind of close, but eventually, you may have, damn, you may have to go in here and, you know what, I wonder if we just crease all. I think that might work. So we'll do a crease level of two, smooth sedative of three. In this case, I think it'll work fine. There you go. So here's your, here's your muscle hexagon muscle um, that just popped in my head um, <laughs> it, it is it's a little bit more difficult as far as rhythm goes you know I, I know what I want to make but then I also know I have to talk about it but I also know it gets boring I don't want to over explain it so thank you <laughs> Hopefully, usually I get yelled at when I do that it's like what are you doing you go too fast um, Cool. Um, let's see. Hmm. Imagine you eat SP before. Yeah, somebody. Uh, I work in the game industry. Um, DJ Croc, I don't know what that says. I know I have a kind of a Russian-y last name, but I don't, I barely speak English. Uh, make ZBrush only add a certain amount of clay per stroke so it doesn't keep lumping more on. Yeah, so when you have... There's this thing called build up, I think. So make poly mesh 3D, control D, control D. So for example, clay build up. Um, you know, if you keep dragging back and forth, it keeps you know building up, building up, building up. Um, I wanna say it's underneath brush, samples build up off. And then now when you brush, it won't build up. It'll just kind of stay there. Uh, also, another thing too, just to keep in mind, is if you do want to limit it, kind of like a layer, you can go in here to thick skin. So if you have build up turned on, and again, it's building up and building up, go in here to thick skin, you can dial in how much you want it to affect your surface, and now it'll kind of cap itself out. Um, also useful for like B, C, K, so like tr cloth hook. If we go in here and we do geometry, say subdivision level two, you see, as I'm using cloth hook, it's kind of pulling along the surface. Um, if I turn off thick skin, it's just going to allow me to kind of move this whole mesh around using cloth simulation. But if you want to limit it, like it's kind of a cloth covering a solid object, that's when thick skin comes into play. So use thick skin to kind of limit the amount of influence your object has. You can go through here and you can kind of nudge across the surface here. I don't take Adderall, but it's uh, just coffee. And in fact, oh, you know what? I don't even have my uh, camera working. I was gonna show you I have a ZBrush mug, but uh, you know what, let's try it. Add, I don't know why it died. Video capture device, sure. Cam link, okay. Let me go to, I'm just gonna delete this one. I want to say it's my video being weird, but I don't think it is. I think it's maybe OBS being weird. Oh, you know what? Maybe it is my camera being weird. I don't know. Okay, next. Um, oh, did I miss a miss a question from Ran? <laughs> see uh, getting back here um, yes you weren't going nuts zero mesh do you think it's better to work with open geometry sometimes zero remesher I get lots of jagged edges that's interesting because sometimes it is sometimes it is I'll go in here uh, for example um, uh, yeah let's do this okay cylinder Oop. did I just mess the brush up just blinked out of existence. Um, for example, if you're zero meshing something, sometimes it is better to have a single sided mesh um, and then sometimes not so much. So we'll go ahead and ignore that because we wanted to clear out our system anyway. So cylinder, edit, 
make poly mesh 3D. So we have a cylinder here and I'm gonna scale this out and then we're gonna say, okay, I want to subtool duplicate W shift drag and then scale this in. So this is a demo I usually do for like Booleans and zero meshing. So um, I wanna do something like control drag out and then let go so we get a couple of different instances and then we're gonna duplicate this off and we're gonna say shift, rotate it and we're gonna offset this a little bit here and let's go ahead and grab this one geometry modified topology digitally hidden. So for these two, we're gonna merge these down and we're gonna say subtractive, live Boolean. Again, I always wanna do like a group by normals. Same thing for this one, just cause it's always useful to have your polygroups. And then for instance, we have, this is our result, right? Um, now, however, if I go down here and again, we wanna do like crease PG dynamic. And then again, this one crease PG dynamic. Now to get the result of this live Boolean mesh, which is um, this right here. Uh, we're gonna go down here to Boolean dynamic situation, make Boolean mesh here, and then here's our U mesh. Now, um, turn on fill. Luckily, because we had polygroups all the way through this thing, if all I want to do is zero mesh this, then I would just isolate it out. I wouldn't necessarily go in here and say, okay, X symmetry turned on, half, depth size down to zero, keep group smooth groups, and try to zero mesh all of this. Some, but having said that, sometimes that is useful. Even if you're gonna delete it later, um, sometimes if you're having problems with Ziri Mesher catching what you need it to, just Ziri Mesh everything and then just say, okay, grab this geometry modified topology, delete hidden, go through here, Q Mesh, Polygroup Ball, pull this inwards. We'll go to Display Properties Flip. That's down here at the very bottom, Display Properties Flip. Um, and then now you have, again, access to do whatever you need to do. So bevel these edges or inset these edges, or since they're all the same polygroup, you can say inset polygroup ball legacy. You can inset all of them. And then uh, we'll do another inset here and we'll say Q mesh polygroup ball, hold down shift, push that in a little bit. And then again, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth set of three, and then have that. So if you're having problems zero meshing with a complex object and you don't need all of it, isolate just that and see if you can zero mesh just that part. Uh, or the opposite, if you're having problems with a single-sided mesh and it's like, ah, oh, it's not really giving me what I need, uh, for example, like this. So if you're zero meshing this and it's just doing something weird, temporarily go through here and like Q mesh and then zero mesh uh, this, the, the thickness part and then isolate it again, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, plasticity, uh, Moi 3D, those types of things too are pretty cool. I don't have a gun real deep into them, but I know people at work that are, so they're doing some really cool stuff. Um, alrighty, greetings from Poland. Nice. Uh, I think I better, been using ZBrush for four and a half years. Build up today and you can turn it off with Smooth Brush. Oh, nice. Uh, so under hold down shift, Smooth Brush modifiers, uh, this is where all your uh, smooth brush is, and it looks like, it sounds like, uh, according to Glitch Gremlin, that underneath, where were we at? It wasn't modifiers, it was samples. Um, turning off buildup might work well for that. Excellent, good to know. But, uh, all right, we're over time. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully that was uh, informative for whatever stuff you're working on. And I'm going to head on out, but... Keep creating. I'll see you guys probably next month. I always say I'm gonna live stream, but uh, again, if you do wanna catch up on this live stream or previous live streams, playlists, find the Big Blue Genie, and it's all in there. And then uh, also on ArtStation, you, sometimes there'll be more stuff in here. It'll have all the videos. Uh, for example, like Pinhead and Friends, it's got a couple of live streams in here and maybe some extras. Um, so this is sometimes a useful place to find stuff too, so. Good luck. Thanks, everybody. And uh, sorry about my camera. We'll figure that out. But um, yeah, catch you.